This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So we've gone through and looked at the background behind the lease and identified that we're focusing on the lessee's accounting and how to account for that right of use asset and that lease liability. However, although all leases are now brought onto the balance sheet under IFRS 16, when previously under the old IS 17 standard they weren't, there are just a couple of exceptions whereby we don't need to recognise a right of use asset or that lease liability. And we have them here. OK, so I really think that these are likely to be a, a multiple choice question. I think if you're looking at the bigger published company accounts question, yes, there's a chance that it could be there. But I think that's more likely to focus on the, the right of use asset and the lease liability. I think this scenario here where there are exceptions from the standard in terms of the normal accounting are much more likely to appear as multiple choice questions within Section A or within Section B. So what is it with regards to where we have these exceptions? Well, one, the asset is going to be used there for 12 months or less. So it's such a short period of time that it is not worth going through there and recognising the right of use asset and the lease liability. It's not going to give useful information to the users. Likewise, as well, just be careful. And I don't think it would be an issue at financial reporting, maybe a strategic business reporting scenario. but. There's no purchase option because if there is a purchase option within the lease, then you will be looking to recognise that asset and that liability. But just think if we're using the asset for less than 12 months, we're going to follow different accounting treatments. OK, uh, what we've also got as well is that if the asset is so low in value, so it gives some examples there, uh, personal computers, small items of office furniture. If they're low in value, then we don't go through there and record the right of use asset or the lease liability. OK, uh, so what we need to go through and do then is look at how do we record it? Well, what we do is we look at the rental payments that we have uh, and we spread those straight line through profit or loss so that we have an equal rental expense every single year. OK. So I think the best way to understand that is to go through there and look at an example uh, here using our low value assets. So just because it's low value doesn't mean to say that we will then yeah, use it for less than a year. We could have a low value asset that is used for, for a longer period than a year. OK, so what we've got, uh, as always, what we're going to record within the financial statements. So to you and I, position statement, performance statement. Uh, we then need to look at the specifics in the scenario. So here, Banana leases out a machine to Mango. So Mango is using the asset. So is the lessee. Banana is the lessor. More importantly, it's a four-year lease. So we need to spread those total payments over the life of the lease, assuming that it is a low-value asset, which it says within the question. OK, it'll be very clear within the question that it is low value. Clearly, order issues, that would be something you would need to consider as to whether or not it is low value, but that's off syllabus, okay? It's not even anywhere near the financial reporting syllabus. It's in the audit and assurance, isn't it? So we have a low value asset, four years that we're going to use it for. $2,000 is payable in arrears. So that's when we make the payment at the end of the lease period. And then what you've got, just a little trick within the question, it says here that Banana, in its generosity as the lessor, grants Mango, the lessee, a rent-free period in the first year. So in year one, we don't pay anything at all. But for the following three years, we pay $2,000 payable in arrears. OK, so uh, what do we go through and do? How does it work? Well, get yourself a blank page of paper. Uh, let's work out the lease rental first. So we're spreading it straight line. So you take the total rental payments uh, and divide that by the number of lease periods. So here, 
the lease period is a year and we have four years. The total rental payments is where you need to be careful. Don't think four years, 2000. Remember, we have one year, the first year, as a rent free period. So we're only making payments for three years. So 2000 multiplied by the three payments that we make, divided by four. Have a go. You got that? No? Yeah. You should get 1,500 per annum. Okay. So we're taking the full 6,000 expense and spreading it straight line. 1,500 each year over the four year life of the contract. So how does that appear within the financial statements? Well, I think to get an understanding of how it works in the financial statements, you need to appreciate the journal entries. So let's look at year one. The easiest bit for every single year, one, two, three, four, is to record the expense. So you debit the statement of profit or loss uh, with 1,500. Happy with that? Yeah, it's what we've calculated as the annual expense. This is where you just need to be careful because if you go back into the question and look at the payments, we had a rent free period in the first year. So how much money did we spend? Nothing. Zero. So we can't credit bank. We can't just leave it as a debit statement of profit or loss of 1,500. We need to credit something, don't we? Uh, what do you think we might go through there and credit? Uh, it's not a payable, okay, because we don't actually owe anything, okay. Uh, what we've got here is an accrual. We've accrued for that expenditure, haven't we? Okay, yeah, we've used the asset. We're recognising an expense for 1500 and therefore we need to set up an equal accrual, isn't it? Okay, so in year one, I debit my statement of profit or loss and credit my accruals. What happens in year two? Well, let's get the easier bit for year two. Debit the statement of profit or loss with 1500 Nothing wrong with that, fairly straightforward. But this year we make our first payment. So at the end of that second year, we credit the bank. OK, anybody spot a problem? Some people are like, no, what's wrong with that, Chris? Great, move on. Uh, no, we've got a journal entry that doesn't balance, does it? We've credited bank. We've debited the statement of profit or loss. There's a missing debit, isn't there? That debit has to be 500 to make it balance. Where do you think that debit goes? Excellent. Well done. Remember, we've got this accrual of 1500 at the end of year one. What we're going to do is we're going to debit that accrual with 500. And we're going to debit the accrual each of the next three years with 500. Therefore, releasing that accrual over the next five years. Five? Three years. OK, there we go. So credit bank, 2000, debit the statement of profit or loss with 1500 and then release that accrual 500 each year. So even though that says it's the journal for year two, it will be not just the journal for year two, but for year three and year four as well. OK, it'll be exactly the same journal. So that's the journal entry. That's the debits and that's the credits. How does that look within the financial statements? Well, we need the statement of profit or loss extract. We need our statement of financial position extract and we've got a rental expense through profit or loss and then accrual on our position statement. What have we got? We'll go back to the journals. In year one, we've got an expense of 1,500 and then accrual of the same amount. Second year, we've got the same rental expense because remember that's what we calculated, wasn't it? 1,500 for each of the years. But remember now, the accrual has reduced by 500. So it was 1,500. It's now 1,000. As I move into year three, I think you get the picture. We've got a rental expense of 1,500 and an accrual of 500. And then this is where you feel the accounting magic really flowing because you've got the rental expense of 1,500. You release the accrual, the last 500 being released, bringing the accrual down to zero. 
at the end of the four years, we no longer need to use the asset. So we return it back to the lessor. OK, there we go. So you've got your equal rental expense over the four years. You've got the initial accrual recorded in the first year that then magically disappears down to zero over the following three years. There we go. That's it. Uh, could it get more challenging than that? Uh, potentially, I suppose it could. The, the examiner can always throw something different in there. Uh, all I would say is just read the question carefully and look at what year it is that you are being required to respond for. So if the question asks you for the expense and the accrual in the second year, be very careful that you don't record the accrual as 1500 because if you do, that's the answer for the first year, not the second year. So be very, very careful with the dates. Other complications that you could have there, uh, we've made an assumption that the lease started at the beginning of the year. You know, what happened if it was halfway through that first year? You know, if it was halfway through the first year, you wouldn't have the 1500 as an expense, would you? You would just have six months. So you would need to be careful there about how much you record as that rental expense. OK, half of the 1500 is that 750. But I'll leave that for you to play around with in either the, the textbook that you have, the study text of your chosen tuition provider or, you know, going through there and working the, the multiple choice questions in the revision kits. Have a practice with them get good at it and then you're going to get yourself some some pretty okay marks within the exam i'll see you on the next video as we begin to look at the lessee accounting in more detail and how to record that right of use asset and that lease liability so i'll see you all soon